So there's just two things we didn't get to in class, and that's unit vectors and the, the trig form of a vector. So um, unit vectors is pretty straightforward. By the way, this is the zero vector. We need a, a, a zero unit like we do with numbers. Uh, if we don't have anything, the zero vector, of course, would be this guy. Um, so provided that we're not working with the zero vector, then to get a unit vector, if you're given V, this is what you do. You divide it by its magnitude. That's it. Okay, so let's see how that works. So here's a vector, uh, negative 3, 5. If I wanted to graph it, I just go back 3, down 5. So this is W. And what's the distance from here to here? Well, that's the magnitude of W, which of course is, we've done this one before a bunch of times, 9 plus 25, it's the square root of 34. <clears throat> I try and simplify that if I can. Remember, these guys sometimes will simplify. The only thing that goes into 34 I can think of is 17 and 2, and none of those have square roots, so I'll leave it alone. And according to this definition, just divide the vector by its magnitude. So that means divide the vector, right? This is a vector, and this is just a number, a scalar value. So you divide, right? So this is what I'm calling the unit vector for W. And you don't want to write it like this. You just want to write it in its component form, which is negative 3 over root 34 and 5 over root 34. And that's it. That's a unit vector in the same direction. What's the magnitude of that guy? Well, it should be 1. So you don't have to do this, but you can do the check. This has to be 1. Right? That is, if, if I do the magnitude of a vector, and this is a vector, uh, then I would do the following, right? Just like we did before. So this, you don't have to do, this should be 1. It should be equal to 1. So that means 3 squared is 9. Root 34 squared is 34. Same thing here, 25 over 34. And sure enough, 9 plus 25 is 34. 34 over 34 is 1. So this is correct. This is the unit vector is in the same direction as W, right? Because all we did was multiply by a scalar that was positive, so it doesn't change the direction. So if I wanted to graph you it would look something like that right it's the same direction but just has magnitude one that's it so to find a unit vector there'll be some of those on your homework and it'll be on your test just take your whatever vector you're given and divide by its magnitude write it like this okay uh one new notation for vectors uh so consider these two vectors these are unit vectors Right, and think about if I asked you to graph i, well, you would just do this. There's one, right? So that's the unit vector i. It's a special unit vector. It has only a x component. And of course, j is just the y component. So the cool thing about these guys is we can, we can write any vector as uh, linear combinations or just something times both of these unit vectors. Okay, so, so consider this. Here's our notation that we've used. Maybe I'll do an example as we do it. So this is, uh, let's just do 2, 3. That's a vector. I want to write this in our new notation using unit vectors i and j, our special unit vectors, parallel to the x-axis, parallel to the y-axis. Okay. Well, the idea here is you're just going to... Um, Remember, V is an X component, right? So that would be, if you want to break up this vector into two vectors, you could just put the uh, X component with zero Y and the Y component is zero and then plug in the real Y component there. And that has to be true, right? If you, you know how to add vectors, add that to that, you get that. Add zero to V2, you get V2, right? So... What you can do next is factor out the V1. So there it is, factor it out, right? Because V1 times 1 is V1. V1 times 0 is 0, okay? And then you factor out the V2. Likewise here, 
right? And you get zero times one. The reason we're doing that is because these are my special unit vectors. Okay, you don't have to do this. This is kind of a, in a way, it's a proof of why I can write v1 comma v2 in it in our in our original vector form x and y just like this the x component times i right it's times that vector so that's actually a product and then v2 times j right so that is a product v2 because v2 is a scalar value the way we've written it now all right so remember these are numbers not vectors v1 and v2 v is a vector but v1 is a number v2 is a number right and i is a vector and j is a vector so you don't have to do all this if i want to write this is real easy if i want to write my vector v which is two in the x direction three in the y direction if i want to write it using our new notation using our special unit vectors it just looks like this you got to make sure you that's how i call i a vector because i can't write really in bold Okay, and that I, of course, is not to be confused with the imaginary unit I. This is vector, this is a unit vector I. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Just another notation. These are the same thing. And this idea is going to help us with the uh, trig form. Uh, these are going to be our multiples of, of each the X and Y component. Okay, so, so far on this video, unit vector not my magic unit vector i and j, but just any unit vector, in this case, negative 3, 5, divided by magnitude, easy. Now, our special new unit vectors, and the only reason we did all this, dot, 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 is so we can understand that I can write it like this, or I can write it as a linear combination of these two unit vectors. In other words, just uh, the sum of two vectors where you have a scalar multiple of each of the unit vectors. Okay. Um, express W as linear combination of the unit vector I and J in trig. Okay, in trig form. Okay, good. So express it I and J in trig form. So trig form is going to be new for us. So I want to write this guy. So if I were to graph the regular one, just our regular vector that's negative three five. We saw that before. Oh geez, I just real. I'm going to change this. I just made a mistake. I'm going to I'm going to change it so I don't have to fix all this. I'm going to make that negative. New problem. You guys probably were yelling at the screen. That's not negative 3, 5. That's negative 3, negative 5. Okay, so instead of do it, doing everything, I just pretend like I got it right. I started with the vector negative 3, negative 5, and I found the unit vector. So this would still have a magnitude of 34, and then the only thing I would have to change would be to make that guy negative. Okay, so now that is an equi a, a correct problem if it's if I start with negative three, negative five. So we might as well stick with that guy since we're here. Negative three, negative five. Write it using i and j, not in trig form. Well, that's easy. Okay, literally, and that's what that's my little arrow. That's how I'm denoting vector. Those are vectors, right? Three and five, negative three, negative five are are scalars. Um, so that's what I have graphed. I have graphed W over here. Uh, now, how do I write it in trig form? Well, the good news is we already know how to do this. I need to find, so here's what it's going to look like. Here's the trig form that I promised you. Trig form of a vector. It's going to look a lot like the trig form of complex number. It's going to go the magnitude of the vector. And how do we get the cosine um, or how do we get the x value? We know that x equals cosine theta. So it's just cosine theta and then sine theta. That's it. Not to be confused with complex numbers. I know it looks very similar and the concepts are very similar. The notation is different. Okay, because i and j, of course, are unit vectors. Um... By the way, without without running through this through, this whole thing's a unit vector, right? Because we know that cosine theta sine theta lives on the unit circle if I don't multiply it by anything. So this is a unit vector. And then if I run by the magnitude through the unit vector, then I end up with my vector. Okay. So the trig for this called a this angle that we need to find has a special name. And you'll see this on the homework. It's called the directional angle. 
of the vector v. Okay, so you already know how to do this, so let's do it. And this will be the last example I do. Um, how did we do this when we did all the other ones? Well, the magnitude would be easy. We already did that. So the distance from here to here is the magnitude of W, which we found previously is the square root of 34. So that's going to go here. So this, mag this vector W is equal to root 34 times the cosine of some angle that I have to find plus uh, usually we put those, where do we put those? It doesn't matter where you put them because it's just the cosine times uh, uh, i. I think usually we put them at the end. So I'll put it at the end. That's a j. Um, and then the sine of the angle. Okay, and again, you know how to do this. It's going to be 180 degrees plus this reference angle, right? And that reference angle, I know we go back 3 and down 5. But that reference angle I usually do, we know the tangent of that al uh, alpha, the, the, the acute angle, lives in a positive world. That is, we could just do 5 thirds. So the arc tangent of 5 thirds is my reference angle, right? And that's not what goes here. I have to find the angle itself. So I go to my calculator for this one. <clears throat> And I usually use degrees when I'm doing arc tangent because the radians will just be a bunch of decimals and a little harder to read. So I'm going to go with degrees and the arc tangent. That's a 59 degree angle. 0 .03, so 59.0. So my angle is 180 plus that. And that is my direction angle, 239 degrees. Right? It looks familiar, just like what we did before. So there's your trig form of a vector. The only thing that's new is the form itself. The finding of the magnitude and the finding of the angle works the same as it did before. All right, so that gets us through all the vectors. And you'll have some of those problems for homework, and they'll be on your test review, and they will be on the test uh, as well. So just let me know if you have any questions.